In this project, we will simulate two falling objects into water using the dynamic mesh method. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFD training videos by Mr. CFD. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Mr. CFD logo and subscribe. The fluid flow around two cubes falling into the fluid was simulated by ANSYS Blunt software in this tutorial. In general, it is essential to study the motion of objects in liquids. The fall of the cubes due to the acceleration of gravity helps a lot to understand the phenomenon of sloshing. Sloshing occurs when a partially filled reservoir with fluid is subjected to permanent or transient external forces. The liquid's free surface moves and heats the tank walls and exchanges forces with its walls. These forces may cause problems such as malfunction of a spacecraft. Therefore, it is essential to study the effect of the sloshing phenomenon on different objects in different fluids. A new window will appear showing you the DOM and extents of your geometry. Also, under the View Length Unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the Scaling section, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. Now, there are several assumptions taken into account for this project. First, the type of our solver is defined as pressure-based since we are dealing with incompressible fluid. Second, we have selected the absolute formulation for velocity. And third, we have selected the transient time study since we are simulating a time progressing phenomenon. Also, because we have a two dimensional geometry, we have selected planar 2D space. And as was mentioned in previous slides, we have enabled the gravity and its value is equal to minus 9.81 in y direction. Now, if you click on each of these wall boundaries and then click on edit button, you can see a stationary wall motion along with no slip shear condition are defined for all of these wall boundaries. By clicking on advanced button, you can see the details of the selected diffusion method. Also, we enable the 6DOF under the options tab since we wanted to apply the motion of our cubes using the 6DOF settings and using the UDF which uses 6DOF macro. And then go over adapt and then select refine or coarsen button. Now, in order to extract contours, we expand the graphics section, right click on contours and then select new. Now in this slide you can easily see the volume fraction of the water liquid and air after the two falling objects or cube have entered the water. And in this slide you can easily see the velocity distribution inside our computational domain due to the falling motion of our two objects. And finally these are the streamlines related to two phases of air and water caused by the falling motion of our two cubes inside our computational domain. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. Obtain the mesh file and also the full training movie by purchasing this product. To benefit from Master CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.